we need specifics, right? And that's what happened when we came out with a tweet saying things went really well, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, what went well? Well, we don't know. So if you don't have specifics and we don't have certain things like intellectual property, those things actually addressed. And I think the second thing that we have to kind of look for is to say, what is this effect going to have on earnings? And right now, nobody really knows. So we've kind of gone through, once we get the first settle, the second one is, did this become self-fulfilling? And did companies actually now going to bring down guidance so that a lot of the stocks are already reflecting that? And maybe now we're looking to the other side and the market can say, OK, we can now see kind of the whites of the eyes as opposed to, OK, things are just bad. Do you think the market has the forecast for earnings next year correct right now? Uh, I think the market today it has it as a pretty accurately in the sense of earnings are coming down. It's a question of when do they come back up again. And I think the market's saying, we don't know if it's coming back up. We think it's going to flatline and maybe not go up for a couple of quarters. And Jonathan, just to get again at this idea of potential catalyst, hope for catalyst, um, we all thought that the midterm elections, Powell softening his tone, um, that meeting with the G20, we're all going to be potentially reasons for the market to get out of its own way just December because it's always a strong month. So um, where do we sit with that possibility that the market just kind of looks the other way at positive catalysts? Do you think we're still in that mode right now? I think we are. And I think we have to get through the government shutdown. We're clearly going to continue to look at tariffs, uh, interest rates with the Fed. That conversation is going to come back up again soon. So all these different factors there, I think we went from you know six months, nine months ago of any negative headline on the tape didn't affect the tape and the market kept going up. I think we're kind of at the opposite point right now. There's so many different things. There's so many different headlines out there uh, that we're discussing that neither that none of them are really going to let this market move higher yet. Rick, how do you think about biggest risk factor for 2019? Oh, I think there's a variety of risk factors uh, and, and it's kind of ironic because if you recall, when we came into 2018, the markets were on fire in January, both equities and interest rates. The story back then was, oh my God, interest rates are going up. But we finally all calmed down and decided they were going up for good reasons, which implies that lower interest rates just are more palatable. Well, look what's happened. In November, 10-year uh, note yields were at 324. They were up 83 basis points on the year. Now we're at 268. We're up 27 basis points on the year. People don't look happier to me. Investors aren't happier. The notion of interest rates is a big risk if they soften too much. Granted, there's a lot of logistics on why rates came down, especially considering interest rates ignored much of the volatility in October. It wasn't until November that they paid attention. And even over the last three to five sessions, when things have been better for equities, the interest rate complex all of a sudden isn't paying attention to the good news on equities, and it continues to slide. There's capital requirements by large institutions that would warrant maybe some buying of treasuries, and that could be part of the effect. But I think the biggest risk for 2019, as counterintuitive as it sounds, is interest rates continue from these levels to move lower. Not a good thing.